Hi guys, it is another sweltering midsummer day in mid-May here in the end times in paradise in Garfield, Texas on this sweltering Monday, May 14, 2018. So I was in part one of uh, what I thought was going to be a two-part doomsday headlines for uh, Monday, May 14, 2018, but I had my own little personal collapse of global industrial civilization here, so I had to take a break. So I'm just going to make my first ever Humpty Dumpty Tribe Monday morning doomsday headlines uh, a three part uh, rant. This is from, from one day on the mainstream alternative media and links you guys have sent me. So I'm just going to kind of pick up where I left off after the, uh, the global industrial civilization collapsed here in Texas for a few minutes. So where was I? I was just starting a, a story uh, from uh, these guys at Vox Magazine. Uh, with this long, this fellow named David Roberts, who I've mentioned before, and this, I mean, this book length uh, article, which I really don't have time to get into, from Vox titled, New Scenarios Show How to Hit the Most Stringent you know, Climate Targets with No Loopholes. What genuine no bullshit ambition on climate change would look like. And uh, anyway, guys, uh, it would take me two hours to read this story. Uh, let's just read the, the part of it, the, the start of it. What would it take to really tackle climate change? No delays, no gimmicks, no loopholes, no shirking of responsibility. The real thing, what would it look like? There you go. Uh, countries are not moving anywhere near fast enough to hit this bullshit, uh, even two degree target, much less than one and a half degree. So we are currently on track for somewhere around three degrees. I was just reading in my last rant a, a Harvard climatologist saying you can kick three degrees out the window and look for four to six by the end of the century, if not more. Uh, it is generally agreed that hitting two degrees would be quite ambitious, while hitting one and a half would be nothing short of miraculous. Uh, <clears throat> so what, what is the plan? Uh, look, how is it shaping up? While there is nothing like a real-world plan in place for hitting those, target yet, those targets yet, climate modelers do have come up with many scenarios for how we might do so. However, however most of those scenarios rely heavily on negative emissions ways of pulling carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. If negative emissions technologies can be scaled up later in the century, their reasoning goes, it gives us room to emit more earlier in the century. Mm, and that's what most scenarios show. Global carbon emissions continue to rise in the short term, then plunge rapidly to become net negative around 2060, with gigatons of carbon subsequently captured over the remainder of the century. And anyway, guys, as I say, this, this one article would be a two-hour rant. So anyway, he's basically talking about pull your goddamn head out of your ass uh, about these unadulterated horseshit. Uh, ideas um, from the mad scientists, all of this geoengineering shit uh, they're talking about and their bullshit little negative emissions. Pull your fucking head out of your ass. 
there's anybody uh, on this planet believing this shit. Uh, and then he then he gives us a reality check uh, of what it's going to look like. Uh, you know, as it's as if it's not already too late. It's going to look like completely eliminating fossil fuels out of global industrial um, society. And although uh, David Roberts doesn't want to say it, I don't mind saying it. There's no fucking chance of it. None. Zero. Uh, we are not going to do what we have to do. What we, what we had to do was 30 fucking years ago. It didn't make a fucking bit of difference, David Roberts. What the fuck we do from now on? We are so fucked. Today, we are so fucked because we didn't take this shit seriously uh, when we first started figuring it out 50 fucking years ago. And uh, anyway, my little we are so fucked sign cannot find a place to rest. So anyway, uh, I better move along because, uh, okay, since it is Monday, I had to take a little peek over at the business page. Don't bet against American shale despite consuming more oil and gas than any other country in the world, the United States is on pace to become a net energy exporter before 2025. The U.S. stands on the precipice of global energy supremacy, meaning global fossil fuel energy supremacy, meaning that we are the supreme, clueless fucking morons on the planet. Hmm. Over the past decade, the confluence of innovative, innovative drilling techniques, otherwise known as fracking, with favorable market, otherwise known as increasing demand, and regulatory conditions, otherwise known as completely stripping any regulations away from uh, big oil and gas, uh, has made the extraction of tight domestic resources economical. This has resulted in an energy boom which has transformed fears of American energy shortages into proclamations of energy dominance. But is it here to stay? Okay, let's go over to the Guardian where we see Zen Master Thick Nat Han says only love, only love can save us from climate change. Uh, only love and rape fantasies, I guess. Anyway, um, the batteries on my bullshit detector button are, are gone, if you're wondering why I'm not uh, reaching for my bullshit detector button. Uh, leading spiritual teacher warns that if people cannot save themselves from their own suffering, how can they expect to worry about the plight of Mother Earth? Zen master Thich Nhat Hanh, one of the world's leading spiritual teachers, is a man at great peace even as he predicts the possible collapse of civilization within 100 years as a result of runaway climate change. Yes, the 86-year-old Vietnamese monk who has hundreds of thousands of followers around the world believes the reason that most people are not responding to the threat of global warming, despite overwhelming science evidence, is that they are unable to save themselves from their own personal suffering, never mind worry about the plight of Mother Earth. Uh, yes. Uh, Anyway, uh, here we go. Uh, for us, 
it is very alarming and urgent, but for Mother Earth, if she suffers, she knows she has the power to heal herself, even if it takes a hundred million years. We think of our time on Earth as only 100 years, which is why we are impatient. The collective karma and ignorance of our race, the collective anger and violence will lead to our destruction, and we have to learn to accept that. And maybe Mother Earth will produce a great being sometime in the next decade. We don't know and we cannot predict. Hmm. There you go. We have to accept that the worst can happen, that most of us will die as a species, and many other species will also die, and Mother Earth will be capable after maybe a few million years to bring us out again and this time, wiser. Again, I, my bullshit detector button is broken. What's going on with the lobster industry? Lobster industry fears weaker shells. Um, that say more people outside the U.S. are enjoying the New England tradition of cracking open a freshly cooked American lobster. Uh, blah blah blah. Uh, that's a the experience hinges on one thing: the lobsters getting there alive. Talking about to Asia, that's a looming problem according to some members of the American lobster industry who are concerned that lobster shells are getting weaker. Uh, U.S. lobster exports to Asian countries have increased exponentially this decade, and American shippers prefer lobsters with hard, sturdy shells to survive the long journey to places such as Beijing and Seoul but members of the U.S. industry have complained in recent years of poor shell quality uh, among lobsters, mostly from Canada and New England. They've raised concerns about warming ocean waters or acidification of the ocean having a negative effect on lobster shells. Good God, and if anybody is wondering why the uh, lobster uh, population seems to be doing so well in the sixth mass extinction, it is because overfishing of the codfish and all of these other uh, predators to lobsters. Since the uh, humans have wiped out all of the, the uh, fish that used to eat the baby lobsters, that used to form part of the basis of a food chain that no longer exists, uh, the lobster populations have rebounded, but now their shells are starting to melt. Okay, let's go from the North Atlantic Ocean to the South China Sea. China's plan to conquer the South China Sea is now clear. Oh yeah, I do have my, I forgot, I, I still have my uh, No Shit Sherlock button. No Shit Sherlock? Yes. Uh, let's see. And we should all be worried. Well, it was hardly surprising when the news came out. Beijing has based permanently, perhaps, offensive weapons on the artificial islands it has painstakingly constructed in the South China Seas. See, these deployments cap a series of deceptions, increasingly belligerent military actions, and various illegal activities that have surrounded Chinese goings-on in the region for nearly a decade. And what are some of this week's recent developments 
surrounding the South China Sea. Uh, well, of course, the big news is this new Chinese aircraft carrier. Uh, China's first entirely home-built uh, aircraft carrier has begun sea trials underscoring how the country is building naval assets to assert its maritime claims in the South China Sea. Along with that, the Philippines Navy says it will now deploy its first ever missile firing assault vessels in about three months. Here is Vietnam has called on China to withdraw military equipment from its South China Sea island outpost, saying China violates Hanoi's sovereignty, increases tensions, and destabilizes the region. And don't forget the good old U.S. U.S. and Philippine forces began their largest annual military exercises. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we have 8,000 uh, American and Filipino personnel along with contingents from Japan and Australia all uh, having their little drills in the South China Sea. Now we're going to go from the shallow South China Sea to the deepest ocean trench on planet Earth, the Marianas Trench, where no shit Sherlock, even the bottom of the world's deepest ocean trench is not safe from plastic bags. No shit Sherlock. Almost 36,000 feet underwater Near the very bottom of the world's deepest ocean trench, scientists came across a troubling find, a plastic bag similar to one you might take home from a supermarket, lying incongruously in the darkness. And I uh, guess when this happened, it was 20 years ago that they found the first plastic shopping bag at the bottom of the Marianas Trench. Uh, scientists say its presence in one of the world's most remote environments signals just how worryingly pervasive plastic pollution has become. And the problem is not limited to a single plastic bag. Oh, shit, Sherlock. Okay, let's see. Uh, what is going on in Turkey? Erdogan's crazy canal alarms villagers and environmentalists. Uh, this is some 28 mile long Canal Istanbul will link the seas north and south of Istanbul to ease traffic on the Bosphorus Strait, a major global shipping lane. It will also turn the west, the western side of Istanbul into an island. Critics have questioned the need for the canal and warned it will destroy, among other things, an 8,500-year-old archaeological site and cause widespread environmental damage. No shit, Sherlock. From Turkey to Finland, to Finland, the uh, happiest country on the planet, environmental group Client Earth files complaint to stop Nord Stream 2 in Finland. Environmental campaign group Client Earth on Monday, today, said it had submitted a complaint to a Finnish court seeking to stop the construction of the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline through Finland's water, citing the risk of serious harm to marine life. 
Finland approved the pipeline last month and the operator has started preparatory work. The work, among other things, the work involves detonating two World War II bombs on the seafloor along the pipeline's proposed route and Kleiner said that could cause serious harm to porpoises, seals, and birds. Oh shit, Sherlock. Uh, yes. Like Finland, Germany has also approved the new pipeline. What's going on over there at Apple Incorporated? Apple helps discover a new technique that could make aluminum for iPhones and other products without, without damaging the environment. Yes, aluminum is one of the most important materials used by Apple. It is what just about every Apple products case is made of. But that is a problem because Apple is committed to being as green as possible and making the metal does a considerable amount of damage to the earth and the environment. Now, Apple has worked with other metal companies to develop the proprietary technique which allows for the generation of green aluminum for the first ever time. That was bullshit. Mm -hmm. All right, next. North Korean nuclear test site closure raises fears of a new environmental crisis. Damned if you do and damned if you don't. Closing down North Korea's nuclear test site is going to be more complicated and fraught with risk than has previously been suggested with analysts suggesting that acting in haste for short-term political gain might lead to a new environmental crisis. Oh, shit, Sherlock. Yes. Uh, anyway, this is sounding a lot like uh, Fukushima. Uh, there you go. Uh, if you're not uh, not aware of this, this administration, meaning the little maggot, has no interest in science and has a worrying tendency to ignore people who do understand science. This is talking about Trump or the little maggot, of course. Okay, back to our own shithole country. Fast-growing fire destroys homes in northern Arizona. A quickly growing wildfire in north-central Arizona destroyed two homes, up to a dozen outbuildings, and was threatening another 400 structures Friday in a rural area near Prescott. Evacuations were in place blah 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 from Arizona to the shit whole country of India sounding like a repeat of last week huh violent storms in India kill at least 86 Indian authorities said Monday at least 86 people have been killed and over 100 in, injured in a fresh wave of violent sandstorms and thunderstorms that battered vast swaths of the country. The new fatalities come just 10 days after a monster sandstorm left more than 134 people dead. 
from India to the whole planet, mothers around the world are in crisis. No shit, Sherlock. <coughs> and this is one of their Mother's Day stories. <coughs> uh, I just love uh, the opening sentence said with no trace of irony in Time Magazine. Of the 136 million people who will need humanitarian assistance and protection in 2018, an estimated 34 million are women of reproductive age and 5 million of them are pregnant. No shit, Sherlock. This Mother's Day, Americans are expected to spend over $23 billion on flowers, cards, and other gifts, which is more than 23 times the annual operating budget of the United Nations Population Fund, the largest global provider of maternity care and reproductive health services in humanitarian emergencies. And of course, the reason for this is because uh, as much as I'm cheering on uh, Donald Trump uh, eliminating funding both to foreign aid to Africa and aid to the United Nations, take a guess, uh, the, the number one uh, place that he eliminated funding was the UN Population Fund, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa. Probably the one, uh, the single most intelligent UN-sponsored foreign aid to Africa, meaning birth control supplies to Sub-Saharan African women, of course, eliminated by Donald Trump to the cheers of the Alex Jones crowd. But you don't have to go to Sub-Saharan Africa to find mothers in crisis. Uh, you can just go to Florida. Mom dies after catching flesh-eating bacteria on family vacation. An Indiana's family vacation to Florida uh, left a mom with a deadly flesh-eating bacteria. Carol Martin, age 50, died Saturday, nearly two months uh, after returning from Clearwater, Florida, with an infection known as necrotizing fasciitis. Uh, the family believes the May the virus may have been from a hot tub at the local Days Inn Hotel. Uh, no one else got it. No one else in the family got it. She was the only one who got in the hot tub. And there you go. Uh, one more reason not to stew your butt juices with a bunch of strangers in, uh, in the hot tub. What's going on with uh, poor Paul Ehrlich this week? Well, as I am uh, interviewing Paul Ehrlich, uh, we've already gone over the uh, Wall Street Journal article beating up on Paul Ehrlich, uh, saying how he got everything wrong in his predictions, and the New York Times uh, weighing in with the Wall Street Journal that Paul Ehrlich and anybody else talking about overpopulation is a deluded old fart. And here is the latest. Uh, Paul Ehrlich is even worse than the New York Times says he is. Uh, everyone is talking about the New York Times piece exposing how utterly wrong, willfully blind, and insanely dangerous Paul Ehrlich is and has been for the last 47 years. This is great, I guess. Of course, it's been obvious that Paul Ehrlich was not just misguided, but an actual charlatan 
since the 1970s. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. All right. Uh, from Paul Ehrlich to the shithole country of Madagascar, where we see this truly tragic headline in Madagascar, fishermen plant mangroves for the future. Planting mangroves for the future. Uh, talk about pissing in the wind, lost cause, making lemonade out of lemons. Oh, hunched over the soil, uh, Malagasy villagers work feverishly, deft feet, fingers planting stalks of mangrove to replace the swaths of mangrove forest they have destroyed for firewood and building material. In just two decades, Madagascar lost about a fifth of its mangrove forest area, exposing its coastline to the ocean's ravages and shrinking the nursery grounds of crabs and fish. And so what they're talking about is they're, they're fighting sea level rise by planting mangroves. I'm, I'm trying to think of a proper analogy fighting sea level rise by planting by planting mangroves. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little lost on the concept since uh, the mangroves themselves will be underwater in Madagascar. So where they need to be planting the mangroves is not the, on, on the fucking beach, they need to be planting the goddamn mangroves about three miles inland for the future. Anyway, uh, what else? Oh yeah, some good news for us old farts. Life gets better after 50. Why age tends to work in favor of of happiness. Can I get one more amen from the bullshit detector button? Bullshit level, DEFCON 5. Yes, my batteries seem just to be reviving on their own. Maybe my batteries have hit the age of 50. If there is any clueless fucking moron who is younger than the age of 50 thinking for one goddamn minute your life is going to get better when you hit 50, I got some bad bad news for you, young man or young woman. Anyway, moving along from that unadulterated horse shit. Uh, what is going on at Disney World this week? Fire-breathing dragon at Disney World Parade burst into flames. A dragon float at Disney World's Fantasy Parade. A dragon float at Disney World's Fantasy Parade burst into flames in Orlando, Florida, says one shocked onlooker in a video circulated on social media, quote, I think we have a problem. The dragon is literally on fire. Yes, folks, the dragon is literally on fire, and it ain't in Disney World's Fantasy Island. Many versions of this story. Video of bear eating ice cream at Dairy Queen leads to charges for zoo, zoo owners. A viral video showing a Kodiak bear eating ice cream at a Canadian drive through window has led to a criminal charge for the owners of the zoo where the bear resides. Quoting the owner of the zoo, Doug Boss, we made a mistake. I'm embarrassed about it. Every time we take a giant predator off the property, we are supposed to notify Fish and Wildlife, send them an email, and we forgot to do that before taking our Kodiak bear to eat ice cream at Dairy Queen. And next to 
that story, uh, let's just wrap it up. Let's wrap up part two next to the bear story. A reminder that you should definitely stay in your car while driving through a safari park. No shit, Sherlock. It should go without saying that those who venture on a car safari to view potentially dangerous animals should not leave their vehicles. Still, there will always be those who defy reasoning, like this decidedly bold group of tourists seen dodging a few cheetahs while walking through a Netherlands safari car park. In this case, the cheetahs were just sniffing around. Cheetahs are, you know, uh, not exactly uh, the most dangerous predators on the planet. But I'm going to wrap up part two of the Doomsday Headlines here uh, and come back in a minute with, if you think you've heard it all, uh, in two Doomsday Roundups for one Monday morning. Think again. Here comes... Part three in just a minute. Bye, guys.